Hi there, I want to do another one of my movie lists and I thought because it's Halloween and because this year has seen yet another Halloween movie sequel come out I thought it would be a great time to rank the Halloween films, all 11 of them across all the various reboots, sequels, franchises, anthology things, everything that they've done. I thought I'd give them a ranking. So let's start with the worst and get to the best. So number 11, easily the very worst Halloween film it's got to be Halloween Resurrection. I mean, this film opens with a retcon of the previous film's ending that makes zero sense, and yet that turns out to be the best bit of the film. The whole film is about a reality show set inside the Michael Myers house, which is just the most stupid thing, and just clearly an excuse to use kind of found footage, which was kind of a trend in the early 2000s. It's really dumb, it's really goofy, it isn't even that scary. Buster Rhymes is a top build lead, which tells you so much about the acting talent here, it's pretty rubbish. I mean, there's a moment where Buster Rhymes does Kung Fu against Michael Myers, and this is meant to be a Halloween film, it's ridiculous. Now, I'm not saying the film has to be serious, but this is really eye-gougingly poor. It's really obnoxious, it's really stupid, it has no scares, it's really dumbed down, it makes no sense, and, and it deals with Jamie Lee Curtis's Laurie Strode in just the worst way imaginable. I think this is pretty easily the worst Halloween film, and I really can't see any Anyone enjoying this except in some kind of ironic manner, there is really nothing here that redeems this film. At number 10 is another completely crap film, but trust me, it's a big step up from Halloween Resurrection. This is Halloween The Curse of Michael Myers, or Halloween 6 The Curse of Michael Myers. And uh, I mean this is this is another dull one. I mean many slasher franchises have a whole bunch of crappy films, but this is definitely one of the Halloween sequel slasher that is just worthless. I mean, the whole problem with this one is that it's really, really badly written. I mean, not kidding, like every single scene has a plot hole, I, and that isn't an exaggeration. The acting's poor. What it does have is it does have like a lot of gore, which makes the kills kind of effective, I guess, but it removes all of the shadowy terror that the Halloween series is known for, instead of having this really overdramatic lighting and overdramatic death sequences. But by far the worst thing about Halloween, the curse of Michael Myers, is the fact that the whole thing is uh, meant to be an explanation of why Michael Myers is evil. And that's the one thing that the Halloween series should never ever do. Because who really gives a shit why Michael Myers is evil? And we shouldn't. It's scarier to not know who he is. And while some other films have tried to explain him in ways that are hinted at or ways that are credible, this is just nuts. This is ridiculous. The whole series has just been about this guy killing people. Now it's about druids and rituals and Michael Myers having to rape people and children who are activated by certain types of moon in the autumn and evil that's activated and all sorts of garbage that makes zero sense, doesn't make the film any more profound or deep and it's just a complete waste of time. The Curse of Michael Myers is just one of the franchise's worst entries and I think at this point it was quite clear that they'd run out of original where to do a slasher film so I just thought fuck it, let's try and explain who Michael is because I guess some people want an explanation because I don't know, they wanted to be scared less. At number 9 is Rob Zombie's 2007 remake of the original Halloween, just also called Halloween, and this is... Uh, I mean... Uh, what the fuck is this? So first of all, this film is way longer than the original film, which is great, because the original film was nice and tightly constructed. This is just over long and messy. The first hour, basically, is a bunch of new backstory made up to explain why Michael's evil, which is incredibly dull and then the second hour is just remaking the exact plot of the original but this time the plot is really shit and the kills are way less interesting. Um, I don't really have much to say about it in terms of like its plot or in terms of like its characters because you know what I don't care it, it, it's just whatever. The thing that really pisses me off with this film is that Rob Zombie is just the most masturbatory fetishistic annoying director. I'm all for directors who are boundary pushing and I defended films that are misogynistic and crass and crude and filled with just horrible things and I think horrible things in cinema serve a purpose. Rob Zombie just thinks they're cool. Rob Zombie's like yeah rape scene that, that's cool. Rob Zombie thinks upskirt shots of corpses yeah that's cool and like oh like like it's just kind of after a while you go you know what like Fuck this. Why am I spending two hours watching a worse version of a classic film that wastes time with fucking subplots about strippers and stuff whilst also just being really disgustingly annoying? And all the characters are disgusting, all the characters are unlikable, there's nothing to like about it. And the worst thing is you get here and you go, you know, like, 
the, all this stuff would be really, really interesting to have a film where everyone is a disgusting, barbaric, horrific person. If one of two things, if either one, it was a comment on it, which it isn't, or secondly, if at least you were going, well, you know what, as a horror film, it's quite effective. It didn't even have to do as a horror film. It's just like, yep, no, I've seen the original and this is way worse. And it is really worse. And maybe if I saw it in a complete vacuum, I would just go, you know what, it isn't as bad. I tell you what, though, I doubt I'd be interested in the Halloween franchise if this was the first one I saw. I think this is a real stinker. And look, I heard passionate defences of this film, but no, no, I'm sorry, this isn't it. This is a bad film. So next up at number eight is Halloween H20, 20 years later, which is the film set 20 years after the original where Jamie Lee Curtis is back as Laurie. And this is a film which has some fans, I certainly know people out there who claim it's the best Halloween sequel, and I can kind of get that view, but I'll be honest, to me this film's pretty much a failure. The first three quarters of this film is solidly really, really boring. It takes forever to get going, the kills that we do see are not very interesting, and if it wasn't for the final 20 minutes, which are legitimately very intense and legitimately quite strong, I think the whole film would just be a really boring experience. I think that mostly Halloween Hits 20 doesn't really hold up just because there's not much in here that's interesting. It's just kind of a standard horror sequel. It's made in the post-Scream era and it tries to be a little bit meta, but it doesn't have the conviction to be a proper sort of Scream-style movie. So it's kind of trying to be a Halloween film and a Scream film when it ends up in an awkward hodgepodge. It doesn't really hold up. It's also far more polished than the sequels prior to this film. And one thing that I think benefits a series like Halloween is kind of the shoddiness of it all is that grungy, dark aesthetic, I think to make them look more polished kind of takes away the nasty, murderous aspect of them. I think the kills here are pretty much some of the worst in the series. I don't think there's much enjoyment to be had on Halloween H20. I get the arguments for it, but to me I think H20 is just another bad film in the franchise. At number 7 I'm going to put Halloween 5 or Halloween The Revenge of Michael Myers, which is yet another subpart entry in the Halloween franchise. I think Halloween 5 isn't too bad, like it certainly has stuff that I quite like about it. Daniel Harris is pretty great in the lead role, and actually the film's quite light-hearted compared to the earlier films, so relatively speaking it's not too unenjoyable. At least it's not self-serious, which is a problem that plagues films like H20. I think Halloween 5 is very meh in almost every respect, it's not very well thought out, it's very generic as a slasher film, it completely ruins the ending of Halloween 4, it messes up the timeline, it, it tries to humanise Myers in a really annoying way, it has some of the series' weakest kills, just generic sort of just people being stabbed, and it's pretty much the least memorable film in the series, but having said that I have no memories of not enjoying this film, it's kind of a film which passed me by, like yep this is fine, and as much as I would love to say it sucks, I don't think it does, I mean I don't think it's good in any kind of substantial way, it's kind of just meh. So Halloween 5 is not a good film, probably a bad film, but it's kind of just a whatever shrug. At number 6 I've gone for Halloween 4 The Return of Michael Myers, which is pretty much just solid standard slasher material. It's fairly dumb, it doesn't really make much sense, it basically misses what the first three films in the series how it doesn't have the tension or the splatter gore or even unpredictability. It's kind of very standard, very predictable. It goes exactly as you kind of expect it to go. It's not a film which is particularly fantastic or memorable, but at the same time Halloween 4 basically just sort of hangs together with a slasher. It's a film which I think is fine, like I, I could watch it again, but at the same time I, I don't think it's very good if I'm being honest. I think it's kind of an okay film. It's possible at times. It does have an absolutely brilliant ending, which I think is one of the franchise's best moments. I think otherwise Halloween 4 is kind of just a clunky stupid film that basically just offers you know Michael Myers killing worth a thin characters for 90 minutes and if you want to see Michael Myers kill worth a thin characters this is one of the better entries doing that I guess. For number 5 I've gone for Halloween 3 Season of the Witch. I actually think we're now into the films which are actually things that are good and I would possibly even kind of recommend I guess. And Season of the Witch is interesting, it's the only film about Michael Myers because this was back when the Halloween film series was meant as an anthology where every film has a different story. So this film has no Michael Myers, it's all about some evil Halloween masks and stuff. It, it, it's one of those films which is really really weird, it's one of those Reagan era satires on consumerism and all this kind of stuff. It has some substance too which makes it a bit more interesting than a lot of the very shallow Halloween films in the franchise. I think 
Halloween 3 season, which definitely is flawed though. It starts off pretty strong, it has this interesting mystery, it has some very transgressive elements which are very exciting to see, but then ultimately it just gets kind of boring and really, really dumb. It has this James Bond style villain, it's a bit ridiculous. It's not a film which I think is a work of art, I think it's very flawed, but I admire the way that it is different and I admire the fact that it kind of holds up as an interesting experiment, as an interesting side project to the franchise. It's weird and bizarre, it's kind of scary, I don't think it's massively scary. I think it's strange and quirky and very very eccentric. It has a really good ending, it has some terrifying moments, but it all has a lot of really dumb moments and annoying moments. It's a film which is very all over the place, but at the same time, because it's different and kind of original and kind of interesting as a concept, I think Season of the Witch pretty much holds up. I think if you're a horror fan, this is the exact sort of film you have to kind of seek out. Okay, so number four is going to be very controversial, I think. I think this is the entry on this list that's going to get the most flack. I'm going to pick Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. To be just be clear, this film is not a masterpiece. I think this is an okay film. I think this is an okay bordering on good. I don't think it's any more than that. What does this have Rob Zombie's Halloween doesn't? Well, it has all of his grossness, all of his objectifying women, all of his terrible tackiness, all of his characters that are just crude and sweary and, you know, and like terrible. I mean, Halloween 2 has in the first sort of 20 minutes someone comment on the attractiveness of a young woman's corpse. That's the level that Rob Zombie plays it at. But, unlike Halloween, unlike basically most of Rob Zombie's films, he isn't making the violence here to be titillating. It actually seems restrained. It actually seems like the emphasis is placed on things other than just trying to make loads of cool moments, which is the thing that drags down zombies work, because zombies work is always, oh look, it's really cool if people have sex and kill people and swear and are crude and crass, whereas this is actually kind of not that. This is, you know, certainly crude and crass in places, but like, it's far more restrained and I think it actually has something that Rob Zombie's aiming at here. He's trying to make a statement kind of somewhat a little bit, if we give him some leniency, on the idea of where madness and insanity comes from. And whilst I certainly think Halloween 2 is not an actual exploration of anything, I like the idea of there being something to this film, of there being an idea put out there regarding both Laurie and Michael in this film. Both of them are different versions of the same sort of evil. Now there's this whole subplot to do with Rob Zombie's wife playing Michael's mother and it's uh, ugh. Now and people hate that. I love it. I really like that. I think it's interesting, it's weird, it's strange. And if you're going to make a Halloween film you need to put something original to the table. And the thing is Rob Zombie's Halloween brings nothing original because it's just the same standard guy's evil because he's evil kind of thing and here's an explanation of why and it's just like all the explanations in the franchise. But this one actually goes, you know what, no, like mystical voodoo bullshit, go with that. Just full on weirdness. And sure the sequences here that suck and don't get me wrong it certainly cops out a little on the previous film's ending and it has its own weaknesses. But that hospital sequence at the first half hour of the film, fantastic, absolutely terrifying, really, really scary, really, really tense, really interesting, and although it's only a dream sequence, it's a fantastic dream sequence and one of the franchise's best moments. So I think this film is really flawed, but I really just respect the fact that it's trying to be something, it's trying to bring something fresh to the franchise after years of stagnation. And it does so with some flair, it does so with some interesting moments, and there's certainly highlights here, there's certainly scenes where I'm like, I like that scene and I could watch that scene again, so don't get it wrong, I'm not saying this is a masterpiece, but Halloween 2, the Rob Zombie remake, yeah, no, I think it's fine, I quite like it. Okay, at number 3, we're now really stepping it up and getting to the actually really good films in the franchise, Halloween 2018, the new film. So this is top tier stuff, this is really interesting, it has the whole lore is now 40 years older, she's traumatised, and this film starts off really strong. It starts off exploring the characters in interesting ways, it has something to say about them, it goes interesting places, and then it does kind of fall down a little, because although Michael Myers comes back and he's great and it's, you know, really interesting dynamic, the Michael versus Laurie dynamic, the film is bogged down with occasional humour, which whilst generally pretty good humour actually, it's kind of tonally strange, and also all the high school stuff is just really lame and naff, and all of that stuff is really predictable and uninteresting and basically leads to nothing. But if we remove that stuff, the rest of this is a really good homage, stylistic twist on the original, it has some very great moments, it knows how to deliver really good kills, there is some really great Michael Myers killings here, and it has some really scary moments. I think it's a bit uneven, I think it has a very particularly misjudged twist and I think it's really let down by various 
sides of the plot, some sides of the plot are really fantastic, some sides are pretty bad. But overall, this is a really respectable film. This is a film that has the heart and soul of the Halloween franchise. It really captures what John Carpenter did in 78, and it does it fresh, and it does it new. And whilst I don't think this in any way holds up to the original, I think this is one of the best sequels of the series easily, and I think it's a new and interesting take on the franchise. So number two is the original Halloween 2. So this film is interesting because it's basically a immediate follow-up to the original Halloween. It takes place on the same night. And whereas the first film was this creeping psychological tension, Halloween 2 is just basically a splatter film. It's just Michael going around a desert hospital, putting needles in people's heads and killing people in various vile ways. And it's really quite gross and disturbing. And I actually think this is one of the scariest films in the franchise. It is really tense. It keeps characters to the side and lingers on empty rooms and people in the background and shadows and skulking around. And it's really, really tense. And I think this is one of the most effective horror or terror films in the franchise. And I think it really, really just sort of is intense and builds up and builds up and builds up. And I think it really works. There's obviously the infamous twist here about Laurie being Michael's sister, which is... Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's necessarily a bad idea. I mean, the sequel certainly the things that ruin this twist because they make a big fucking deal out of it. But it isn't executed very well in Halloween 2. But as a concept, it's not too bad. And certainly, I think if we ignore that strand of the story, it's pretty good. I also think some of the earlier stuff with Loomis is very interesting, I think. I know that the uppage in gore was done by John Carpenter, who feels that he's kind of misjudged it now. And I think, not really, I just think... To be honest, it's more interesting than some of the later sequels where they turn down the gore and just have Michael stabbing people. Like, at least this is interesting where the people die, and at least this is actually, to me at least, a scary and intense film. So to me, Halloween 2 is one of the best things in the franchise, and I think this is a solid, solid slasher or splatter film. Number one is the most obvious fucking number one ever. It's the original Halloween, it's John Carpenter's 78 original, because you know what, like, you, you can't beat it. Not only is it the best Halloween film, it's one of the best films of its kind, period. I mean, this is the reason why horror films are what they are today, because from the late 60s to the late 70s you had all this interesting horror stuff, then Halloween came along and everyone went, that's a good one, and they just copied that for a decade. And then horror just became slashers, and that's fine. And it led to loads of other great films, I think A Nightmare on Elm Street and other slasher films are fantastic, so I'm not dissing slashers or anything. But this film is iconic, it's an influential film, and John Carpenter's direction is so intense. He knows how to get the psychological tension to build, and build, and build. And the whole thing is really lean and tight, there's nothing superfluous, it's really well written, it's really, really efficient, it is legitimately scary, it's really, really creepy, it has moments that are tense, it doesn't let up, and the music is also fantastic. John Carpenter's well-respected score deserves the respect it has because man it is amazing and the original Halloween is pretty much undeniably just a fantastic piece of filmmaking. I don't think I'm gonna say that it's perfect but I don't think I'm gonna see many films better than this. So yeah I think the original Halloween is just a horror classic for a reason and I have nothing else to really say that hasn't already been said by a million other people. Everyone knows this film, everyone is aware of this film, it's pretty damn amazing and if you're gonna watch the Halloween film, you can't top the 78 original. And every film on this list is way weaker. Like, I, like there's there's no comparison here. Not a single film on this list gets anywhere near the quality of this one. And yeah, like, it, it's done. This is the best one. Simple. So that's how I'd rank the Halloween films. I'd love to hear your thoughts if you've seen any of the films, so please leave me a comment or leave your own rankings in the description. I'd love to see how we agree or disagree. If you like my reviews and list, you can subscribe or you can follow me on Letterboxd or Twitter. And thank you for watching.